HTML is the computer language we use to create web pages with. Uh, HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language. And we're going to take a look at these four terms uh, almost from the back reverse order here and, uh, and try to get a good definition of what HTML is going to do for us. Uh, first of all, it's a language. It's a computer language. It is not a programming language. It is a markup language. Markup languages are actually a little easier to learn than programming languages in computing. Um, it doesn't really require logic, so you don't have things like if statements or while loops or or anything incredibly mathematical. Uh, markup languages simply are a, a way for us to mark up sections of our web page. For example, we might mark up a section as a header. We might mark up a section as a footer. Uh, we could certainly mark up columns on our design. But we essentially put our content on our website, then mark it up as, uh, as what sort of design or what sort of area it's going to look like on our screen. The next terms of the HTML are hypertext. Now, when the web really first began, hypertext was really just a good buzz term for a text that's a link. Um, we often refer to them as hyperlinks or hypertext, but essentially any of that blue underlying text that you've seen online that's clickable and that you can take to another place, that's a hyperlink or hypertext. If you put this together, linking text or links, uh, combine that with a markup language, that's essentially what HTML is. It's a language that allows us to mark up our designs and our content and place links in them so that you can link to all over the web. Now HTML is written in what's called tags. Um, tags are generally, generally pairs of code that wrap around objects. Uh, objects or uh, content. Now I say generally there because this is a little bit loose. Generally tags are in pairs. There's a few cases where tags are not going to be in pairs. They're just going to be a single thing. But we'll, we'll take a look at that when the time comes. So just for reference here, I want to take a look at what a tag sort of is comprised of. Um, what I'm about to show you isn't really code, but it's going to work like code, just to give you a quick example. So let's put a few of our favorite subjects down here. Let's do English, Math, I know that's everyone's favorite, Science, Speech, and Web Design. Save the best for last year. If these are subjects that I wanted to try to describe with code, with markup language, um, I could do that by simply putting the tags around them. Tags wrap around our content. So if I was going to use the word, uh, some word to describe English, maybe I think that English is easy. So I could put the easy tag around the word English. And you see a tag is made up of several things here. Um, first of all, it's made up of uh, an opening bracket. It's actually the uh, greater than, less than symbol that's on your keyboard. It's right above the, the space bar, um, over towards the right a little bit. But we have our first bracket, this opening bracket. Then we have the word that's going to be the actual tag. So we could say this is the easy tag because we have the word easy there. Then we have a closing bracket. So we actually open with the less than symbol, then the word, then the greater than symbol. Um, and this makes up what's called our opening tag. Our opening tag. Closing tags go after the content, and they look virtually the same with one exception. They have a uh, backslash in at the very, very beginning of them. Now, this uh, the slash is down on your keyboard, again, on the row right above your space bar over to the right, right next to the shift key. So we've got this slash here that designates this is a closing tag. The opening tag is where easy begins. The closing tag is where easy ends. Everything between this easy tag would be considered to be easy. Let's try another one. If we had a word to describe math, maybe math is hard. 
So I could put the hard tag around the word math. Science, uh, maybe science is interesting. So I could add the interesting tag around science. So again, these aren't real HTML tags. I'm just trying to give you some insight on how tags are made up. Speech, hmm, intimidating. And I would put the slash intimidating. Hope I spelled that right. Um, at the end of the speech. And web design, of course, is fun. You didn't see that one coming, did you? So we have fun around web design. Now, if you can get this concept, you have learned an incredible amount of information about HTML and how it's made up already. The, the code itself isn't that difficult. Um, but it's when we start to combine it with other pieces of code is when it, it really starts to get intimidating, I think. Um, so this concept of wrapping tags around content or objects is, is rule number one. Now let's say that we wanted to put more than one tag around something. Let's say that with web design, not only is it fun, but it's also exciting. Is there a way that we could put two tags around web design? Absolutely. We would simply wrap another tag around it. Now it's important that we go do the correct order, however. If fun is first, that means that on the other side, on the closing side, fun would also need to be last. Um, exciting is inside of the fun tag. Do you see that? Fun is on the outside. If we put the opening exciting tag inside of the fun tag, then the closing one would need to follow suit. So you sort of work from the inside towards the middle and work your way out. So it's important we get the correct order of operations. Uh, I could do this a third time here. I could say it's fun, exciting, and awesome. So now we have three tags around one piece of content around the word web design. And all of these things describe uh, what's inside of those tags. And that concept is, it's not really difficult, but it, it looks different. You know, now when I look at this code, it looks uglier. I have a tag, but then right after the tag, I've got another tag, and it creates this weird little symbol in between there. It almost looks like a, a emoticon for mad eyes or angry eyes or something. But then when you start to combine it with the slashes and so on, it can, it can be intimidating. It doesn't look um, easy to figure out, but if you can conjure up the fact that these things are all separate tags and each one has a closing tag, you will be absolutely fine this semester. So let's look at some real HTML code aside from uh, just some of this generalized stuff. Let's say that I'm going to write out a small sentence here that says, um, I like web design. I like web design. And I want web design to be a little different looking. Maybe I want web design to be uh, a different font or a different color, different size. Maybe I just want it to be bold. For one of our very first tags here I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the strong tag around web design. The strong tag is actually an HTML tag that, uh, that makes our text bold. So if I were to look at this in a web browser, we'll talk more about web, brow web browsers shortly. Um, I like would be the default font. It would be black and it would be Times New Roman. And web design would be bolder. It would still be black and Times New Roman, but it would be bigger. It would be stronger and have sort of a bold look to it. So whenever we're creating HTML tags, um, a lot of times they're not just going to be on their own line like they were moments ago when we were looking at our subjects. Uh, they're going to be in the middle of a sentence. And I like web design, where the term web design would, is wrapped in a strong tag, would work fine. Most of the time, we're going to continue adding to that. Something like this, where now this tag is a little bit more intimidating. If I do a cursory glance at this line, 
It doesn't just look like regular English to me. Now it looks like code. There are brackets and slashes and and it just looks different. So that's an example of how HTML code is going to be uh, created for us. So I'm going to erase all of this. I'm actually in my favorite text editor. Uh, if you're on a PC, a Windows machine, you're going to want to open up Notepad++. If you're on a Mac, you can open Text Wrangler. That's what I'm on right now. Uh, I'm in Text Wrangler on a Mac. And the first time, uh, really every time we open up our text editor, we're going to create what's called a basic HTML skeleton. A basic HTML skeleton is the amount of code that you're going to have there each and every time, no matter what type of website you're working on. It's a little bit lengthy. There's six or eight lines of code that ultimately you'll need to just memorize. But I want to start by showing you exactly how this works. Um, so from a blank document, I'm going to start with the HTML tag. Opening and closing. And you can drop a few extra lines in between there if you'd like. Um, we're going to be adding quite a few lines of code between these today. But typically, the first and last line of our web page is going to be the opening and closing HTML tag. Within the HTML tag, there are two main sections. Just inside the top, there is the head. So I'll go ahead and put the opening and closing head tag. Just after the head, we have what's called the body. And the body will take up the remainder of our code. So ideally, we have the head at the top, and we have the body below that. And you can put a line or two between each section if you want. Uh, first, let's talk about the head. The head is going to include pieces of code that the end user will not see on their website. When you are designing a website, you're going to have colors and graphics and fonts and text and, and columns and all sorts of content, but none of that's going to be seen in the head tag. All of that will fall in the body. The head tag is used primarily for uh, codes that are going to help your website function better. Uh, we may have some code in there that will help us to um, be found by search engines a little bit easier. So generally, the head is going to include things that we will not see in our design. No color, no fonts, no layout, nothing like that goes in the head. For today, the only thing that I want to show you that would go in the head tag is the title tag. And the title tag would look something like this. Opening title, closing title. Um, and I'm putting my first website as the title of this web page. Now the title is something that's going to appear actually on our browsers later. Um, I'm going to fire up a browser. And I'm going to go to ivytech.edu. Now when I go to this browser, if I look way up here on the very, very, very top of my browser bar, I see Ivy Tech Community College of Indiana. This is the title tag. Okay, It appears on the top of my browser. It does not appear down here in my design anywhere, uh, nowhere in my colors or fonts. It's actually just something that's part of the browser. Ultimately, if we open up new tabs, let's say I go to another tab and I go to uh, CNN. Now I've got a couple of tabs up here on my browser. It doesn't matter what browser you're using, by the way. Um, but I can see on my first tab, Ivy Tech Community College of Indiana. That's the title. That's the title tag of this page. I can go over to CNN, and I can see here CNN, Breaking News, U.S., World Weather, etc. All of these things here are part of the title tag for CNN's website. So the title not only appears on the top of your browser, it also will appear on your tabs if you've got uh, tabs on your browser. Let's say that I run out to Google and let's say I search for Ivy Tech. When you're going to your favorite search engine uh, you'll notice that when you search for any term the link typically is in blue underlying text um, and you'll have many of those to choose from. The vast majority of the time this blue text that we're seeing here 
That's the title tag. So the title not only appears at the top of our browser and on our tab, it also is what search engines see and provide as a link to the end users it may find us someday. This is tremendously important that our titles are there. If you don't have a title, Google will assign one or, or whatever search engine the user is using will assign one and it may not be the most uh, informative title. So you really want to have your own title there that really explains the name of your company and maybe even what page it is for uh, the company. So it's important, incredibly important, that we put a good title on there. Um, we'll talk more about search engines later, but if Google can't find you, no one else in the world will find you either. It's so incredibly important that we optimize our websites for uh, search engine optimization. But more on that later. Let's come back to our code and, uh, and understand that this title tag is important for those three reasons. It'll appear on the top of your browser, it'll appear on your tabs, and it's also the clickable link that search engines will display. So very, very important. Uh, for right now, that's all we really need in our head tag. I'm not going to put anything else there. But down here in our uh, body, this is where lots and lots and lots of things will go. And I don't want to overwhelm you at this point with, with a lot of different types of tags, but I do want to simply put, this is where my content will go. All of my content. Um, I can drop in text, graphics, flash animations, video, anything that you can imagine on a website will go in this body tag. Um, and this, this body tag will be much, much longer than the head tag. The head will generally have three or four lines in. The body, we may have 50 or 60 lines in. So it really just depends on how much stuff we've got on our website. Now you'll notice as I'm writing this code that every time I, I put in a new tag or, or nest something in a tag, I indent a couple of times, and I'm actually just hitting the space bar. Um, there's no set rule to how many times you can space. Uh, you can space or you can not space. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a good way to keep our uh, code organized. So as I am in putting new tags in, typically you space twice. That's generally what most web designers do. If you space once, it's okay. If you space three times, it's okay. But generally, two times is, is the typical protocol. So that gives me some insight on basic HTML code.